Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video I will show you how to compute eccentricity in a building. So before calculating eccentricity let us understand some terms used in this calculation. So the first one is diaphragm and it has two types the first one being rigid second one is flexible similarly center of mass center of rigidity or also known as center of stiffness and finally eccentricity this is cm and this is known as cr you can find this in etabs as well so basically starting with the diaphragm the horizontal arrangements such as roof floor or other membrane or even horizontal bracing employed to convey lateral forces to vertical elements are known as diaphragms and as i said there are two types the very first being rigid diaphragm so basically a diaphragm is called as rigid when its midpoint displacement under lateral loads is less than the twice the average displacement at the ends similarly uh, we also have flexible diaphragm diaphragm are considered to be flexible when the maximum lateral deformation of the diaphragm is more than the twice the average story drift of the connected story so we can simply differentiate uh, rigid and flexible diaphragm on the basis of the displacement that is mid span deflection is less than twice the average displacement and flexible diaphragm is said to be when the mid span deflection is greater than the twice the average displacement at the ends so in this way we can differentiate rigid and flexible now let us understand about eccentricity so for understanding this let us understand center of mass and center of rigidity so basically center of mass is the point let us consider over here a point if a force is applied through it it moves the floor in the direction of the force without rotating so that is center of gravity in simple term it is the point at which or it is the point through which the resultant of mass passes similarly center of rigidity if a force is applied through this point the horizontal force causes or translation of the floor without any rotation now if we merge these two definition that is center of gravity is the point at which the or through which the resultant of the masses passes and similarly center of rigidity is the point to which or in which the horizontal force is applied so if these two point coincide this is the horizontal force applied and this is the point through which the horizontal that is the resultant of the mass passes then there will be a translation only there won't be rotation now if the center of rigidity lies at this point that means the horizontal force will be applied through this point and there is difference in the position of the center of rigidity and center of gravity so this is known as eccentricity that is the difference in the center of rigidity and center of mass and this will obviously cause a rotation equal to force into eccentric distance so this is why eccentricity is important in building that is it is a important check we can see that eccentricity in a building is not a good thing however eccentricity uh, we cannot completely eradicate eccentricity in the building it is a inevitable thing in the building there will be eccentricity in the building to a certain extent so that is introduced as a accidental eccentricity so in the code also you can find some code prefer 5% and in some code there is 10% that is accidental eccentricity so there are few reasons for considering this accidental eccentricity so the very first being torsional ground motion possibly subjecting the structure to rotation about the vertical axis similarly uneven distribution of live load mass during the lateral loading and variation between computed and actual values of structural properties so that is why we consider minimum eccentricity in the case of column also as we consider minimum eccentricity of 20 mm for the axial load so accidental eccentricity has to be considered so this was the basic theory for the eccentricity now let us see how to incorporate this theory in the design procedure in etabs so firstly we have to define load patterns and while defining the load pattern for the lateral load we'll see this eccentricity ratio so this is the first thing we have to consider 
the accidental eccentricity for the analysis of torsional effects the applied torsion at each level shall be used either the force calculated by equivalent static method or the combined inner story inertial forces found in a model response spectrum method the accidental eccentricity can be taken as 0.1 times of the width that is 10% of the width of the building so for eccentricity ratio we get a value of 0.1 this has to be done for either direction that is x and y so this is how the accidental eccentricity is considered now we have to check after considering all the loads and analysis is done we have to check the eccentricity in each floor level and then we will check whether the eccentricity is within the permissible limit or not firstly we will provide diaphragm for each floor so as i said diaphragm is the horizontal arrangement employed to convey lateral forces to the vertical elements so all these horizontal members will subject or will convey the lateral forces to the vertical element that is coulomb for now and before that we have to define diaphragms here so i have already defined d1 d2 d3 like this and i have selected the rigid option so now let us assign diaphragm d1 for the next floor either you can assign d2 or even you can go with the d1 it has will automatically differentiate it so for now let us assign d2 similarly for the third floor d3 d4 d5 so you can see there is no interconnection between the two adjacent floor for each floor single diaphragm will be assigned now before running the analysis go to set load cases to run and select calculate diaphragm center of rigidity if this is unchecked then we cannot compute eccentricity now run now so the analysis is complete now we will check the center of mass and center of rigidity so for that i have prepared an excel sheet so this much data is taken from e tabs and this is basically ex ey that is the eccentricity along x and y and lx being the length in x direction ly being the length in y direction and this gives the percentage so this is computed as xccm this is center of mass and this is center of rigidity in x direction so this minus this okay center of mass center of rigidity similarly for y direction also we will compute y ccm minus y cr and accordingly we will get positive value and negative value and with reference to this value we will make the arrangement that is either we have to increase the stiffness of the building uh, towards the axis or away from the axis in either direction and eccentricity check this is the percentage which is basically eccentricity divided by length in that direction into 100 this will give the percentage and this value should be less than 10 percent for nbc 105 now let us extract the data from etabs so for this go to display and in the show tables go to structure output in the other output items here you have center of mass and rigidity okay and select all this and copy control c go to excel and i will paste it over here so plinth first floor second floor top and this is the diaphragm d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 in the base so basically if you see here in e tabs this is the base floor plinth level first floor second floor third floor fourth floor top floor we don't have we haven't provided diaphragm in the base as there is no any horizontal members to transfer the vertical or transfer the horizontal lateral forces to the vertical member so we haven't provided any diaphragm over here and for this floor that is the plinth level also it is quite stiff and for the lateral force as per the code the height seismic height is to be considered from the top of the rigid basement if there is basement basement wall and in case of uh, moment resisting frame system only we will consider from the base 
so for now we will not have any center of rigidity considered for this floor that is plinth you can see here we have no value over here similarly for the first floor center of mass in x direction it is 18.15 and in for the center of rigidity in x direction it is 20 similarly for yccm this is 10 and 13 we get the value so in x direction there is no eccentricity but in case of y direction there is eccentricity greater than 10 percent because the width in y direction is comparatively less so this is 36 meter and 16.8 meter you can get this from here also so check the value over here so x is 36 similarly y is 16.8 and accordingly the percentage is computed now for y direction this eccentricity has to be brought below 10 percent else we have to override eccentricity so we have to increase the stiffness or decrease the stiffness in y direction and as i have say, uh, said the value as negative and positive so negative means away from origin positive means near to origin so for now let us check this value yccm minus ycr gives a negative value that means center of mass is towards axis center of rigidity is away from axis so if i move this you can understand center of gravity is near to the axis and center of rigidity is going away from the axis 10 meter and 13 meter so i have to bring the center of rigidity towards the axis so that these two points that the center of gravity and center of rigidity will coincide or will be brought to the nearest value possible so for that i have to increase the stiffness of the building in y direction so what i can do is i will bring or provide shear wall near to the axis in y direction so that i can bring this stiffness towards the origin so this is just a general idea there are other approach as well to introduce or uh, to bring the center of gravity and center of rigidity near just to show an example in a short and quick video so let me unlock this and i will provide this shear wall in this direction so the stiffness in y direction will be increased so i'll continue this up to fourth floor So now let us check and we will copy this data so you can see there is certain decrease in the values in this way with the modification of the stiffness of the building we can decrease the eccentricity in the building and bring it within the permissible range so for the inclusion of the shear wall we must also consider the architectural arrangement of the building there is window or opening or not so in this way we have to consider that uh, in, with inclusion of the shear wall there might be problem in the modal mass participation so that must be also checked for now i'm just trying to show you how to reduce the eccentricity in the building by inclusion of the shear wall or we can also go with the modification of the column dimension so the main idea i'm trying to give you is how to compare center of gravity and center of rigidity so i hope this video helped you and if it did help do like and comment in the video and subscribe our channel share with your friends thank you